taste wine and you walk into a bar and someone pours a glass of wine, what should the average person be looking at when looking at a red wine? Well, it's interesting to say look at because the things that I try to encourage people to do is to use uh, three of their major senses in wine, the last of which is taste, but the first of which is your, your, your eyesight. Um, so when I look at a wine, or start to taste a wine, first thing I do is, is I look for the color and texture into the wine. I find one of the most effective ways to do that is to take a glass and tilt it against some kind of white or light colored body. And really I'm just looking at the depth of the color, uh, how it edges out um, on the lips of the wine itself, uh, clearly giving me a visual indication of what I'm about to uh, taste. Um, so that's number one. Uh, one thing I don't really uh, do a lot, though I'm swirling the wine, a lot of people will, will try to appreciate what is called the legs of the wine. Um, regrettably, as fun as that is, um, it really doesn't denote any uh, note of quality or taste to the wine. It essentially tells you this wine has alcohol in it. When it comes to the next sense, uh, before I taste the wine, I really want to smell it. Uh, I remember back in my biology class when I was a seventh grader uh, uh, putting all kinds of fruits in front of me and then holding my nose and then tasting them and they were trying to get the point across that we don't taste anything without smelling it. Same thing with wine, obviously. Uh, hence why the nose is located <laughs> very appropriately close to the mouth. So the reason why um, lots of people do this, there's two reasons, one of which is to put air into the wine, give it aeration, which is great. But the primary reason, at least in my mind, is I want to fill that bowl full of scent. Scent, in general, is heavier than air, so it will shrink down to the bottom of the glass. You try to sniff it, and you will not get um, any flavor going into your nose. So if we circulate the wine like this, we're filling the bowl. So my objective is, is to put my nose as far into the bottle as possible, or into the glass, without getting it wet. And generally when I do a wine tasting, I'm really trying to explore the wine, I'll do that about three times. And take a very big hit and then kind of breathe and just uh, understand what, uh, what I'm smelling, all the fruit flavors, and try to, uh, as I do as a, a wine connoisseur would do, is trying to layer those flavors out. Which ones do I smell first? Which ones are left over? Um, and also, am I starting to smell anything that would be concerning? All the way from alcohol to a musty flavor that could be a corkage, things of that nature. I'm not necessarily looking for those, but I do want to be aware that those might be there. So on the third um, smell, I generally go right into tasting the wine, putting it into my palate. I take enough um, that I could, what is called, volatiling your esters. You know, I learned this when I went to UC Davis, took some classes. It's a wonderful term that really says I'm sloshing the wine in my mouth. Another way to express this is, don't drink wine like you drink beer. We generally drink beer by putting it on top of our palate and sending it back as fast as we possibly can. Wine could be appreciated much better if we get all our palate and all our taste buds working. And in doing so, and what I really enjoy is when I get the wine into the lower jowls of my, um, my palate, it gives me all the rich textures. We get our sweetnesses and our sours, saltiness, and of course, by allowing all the wine to go over the mouth, I get that wonderful finish of a wine, things that I taste after the wine has left my mouth. And my... Um, my end game on drinking wine or tasting wine is I do this and does it inspire me to drink more? If so, then I've had a great glass of wine.